China. Biglang nawala sa news mga yun. Di ba? Dahil lang sa corona. <laughs> Pati mga dadalo sana dito. Diba? Na-test din na ang yung faith nila dahil sa corona. Pero may ginagawa ang Panginoon. Ang corona ng Panginoon dapat ang itaas. At walang kinatatakutan ang mga nananampalataya. Medyo i-check yung kasi tanong kung masalit ang alam po. Meron tayong mensahe ngayong araw. Uh, for those of you who were not here last Tuesday, sinong nandito? Sinong nandito nung Tuesday? Tapos ang kamay, yung mga nandito last Tuesday and Monday, ha? marami ang wala. Pero, di ba, Le? Our message is about being part of a miracle. Napakinggan nyo na ba? Being part of a miracle. Ano kaya yun? Sino yung mga may testimonies na ginawa ng Panginoon sa kanilang buhay? Tasa ka ba? Yeah. Uh, mga naramdaman at nakita ang miracle ng, sa, ng Diyos sa kanilang buhay. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yung mga wala pa. Uh, let us be part of a miracle. We have a short story. Gusto kong magsimula sa isang story and then little by little we'll be covering some parts of our topic last Tuesday about uh, uh, stewardship and about servanthood. But there's this story here in the Bible, the Old Testament, so 2 Kings chapter 4. During a time of great trial, Ngayon, we are experiencing uh, here in Asia ang isang testing na na-prophesy ng ni Jesus sa, Mata, sa Luke chapter 11. Yeah. Ganon din sa Matthew chapter 24. Anyway, you have heard this from the bishop. Na there is a time na you know that the coming of the Lord Jesus is near. When you hear about rumors of wars, Pestilences, earthquakes, earthquakes sa taal, sa Batangas. Sila ang unang nasa news na gumamit ng face mask. Napakatindi ng galing ng Pilipino. Ilang days lang tumaas yung 75 pesos na N95 face mask. Naging 1,000. Wala na, pati sa bagay, wala na mabili ng face mask. Wala pa yung corona, naubos na. Yung face mask. Mas lalo ngayon nadagdagan, dyan na yung corona. Kasama na yung ash fall <laughs> na lumilipat sa hangin. And dyan na, hinahanap na. Hinakatakutan yung mga pestilence. But even here in Hong Kong, this is, this is a test. I've heard last Sunday that the bishop announced na there are some employers already letting go of their uh, domestic helpers, mga Kong yan, dahil sa fear na wala nang ibabayad pang sahod. Hindi actually dahil sa sakit. Pero wala na yung, dahil hindi sila makapaglabas, makapagtrabaho, hindi sila makalabas na bibili ng mga kagamitan. Kaya pati mga groceries, may mga there are places na panic bayan na sila. ano mangyayari na? It brings worry pati sa inyo. Di ba? Pati sa atin nananampalataya, nagiging testing ito kung ano yung mga importante, ano mga, anong mga kinakatakutan natin, what are the things that we worry about the most. Di ba? And uh, dito matetest. And that's why I entitled my uh, message, Being Part of a Miracle. Amen. Amen. Para yung mga nyo maintindihan. In chapter 4 of 2 Kings, we hear of a widow and we put ourselves in the place of that widow in a situation where there was famine in the land. Walang makain, walang, walang, I want to say, tubo na mula. Ha? Walang mga, ha? Walang tumutubo, ilokan, talaro na rin. I want to say, sabong na kastoy, I want to say, makan, walang makain ng mga animal. 
So kung walang makain, ibig sabihin, wala talagang harvest, walang makukuha na ng pagkain. Wala nang magiging trabaho. Di ba? And so there's this short story, if you could project from verse 1 to verse 7. And we see the story of uh, the servant, the prophet Elijah, uh, visiting a place and there is this widow. Widow would, uh, later on we would see that a widow would, uh, would represent any of us na may kahirapan, may sitwasyon. Usually it's better to say may sitwasyon kaysa yung sinasabi natin may problema. Diba? Depende sa tao kung, kung nakikita mo yung problema na talagang problema, yung challenge mo na isang situation na pwede kang bumangon at you could overcome the situation and when and good, you are a conqueror. Yeah. And here is this widow. We start by reading, the wife of a man from the company of the prophets. Alam niyo tabi, company of the prophets, isang grupo na nananakalataya. They are serving God. The company of the prophets, isang gimong, isang fellowship, isang church. Company means a gathering. Marami, hindi isang tao, hindi dadalo lang. A company means marami sila. Marami sila, maybe a company of free believers in Hong Kong. Yeah. Or a company of free believers in Macau. So, a wife of a man belonging to this company. So, even isang kristyano, isang naglilingkod sa Panginoon. At naiwan siya na naging isang balo. Tama ba? Balo rin sa Tagalog. Naging balo dahil namatay yung asawa. So, she cried out to Elisha. Sabi niya, your servant, my husband is dead. I don't know how you would shout. <laughs> Pastor! <laughs> Paano may explain? Your servant, my husband is dead. You're declaring that you are a widow. Parang you lost hope. How, how would one, how would you describe one who is shouting out? Desperate. You would not shout if you were not in need. May, mag, may mamawala ang pera o cellphone. Mag-aalala bigla. Sisigaw. Ay! Napala na ni Chay! <laughs> Napakahalaga yung cellphone pa kasi yung Bible. May mga hindi kakain na, hindi na makatulog kung wala yung cellphone. Makatabi. But in desperation, one could really cry out. You should just imagine, your servant, my husband is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord. May takot sa Diyos ang aking asawa. May takot ang, sa Diyos ang aking pamilya. So meaning they are devoted Christians. They are devoted followers of God. Right? And you know that he revered the Lord. Alam mo, sumusunod at member ako ng free believers. I'm a member of the prayer group. Ako ay isang dance ministry. Ako ay nasa praise and worship. Ako ang nag-attend ng Bible study. At ako ay nawalan ng asawa. Andi dito ako naghihirap isang balo na may dalawang anak. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys. Ah, may mas malaking problema na naman pala. O may humahabol na napagputangan. Ano yung pangalan ng credit company dito? JCG. Tama ba yun? Hindi SGC, ha? SGC sa atin yun. Yung JCB, ano? Na mahilig mag, magpautang sa mga taga Hong Kong. Mm. Ayun, yung creditor. The creditor ng aking asawa, andyan na. He's here, balak andyan na, kukunin na, he's coming to take my two boys. Mas malaki na naman problema. Tingnan nyo ha. What, let's try to analyze the situation of this mother and this wife. It's famine. Walang magpagkuha ng pagkain, walang trabaho. Pangalawa, nabalo. Walang kasamang magtrabaho, maghanap buhay para may ilalagay na pagkain sa hapagkainan. Ha? Table, ano? Hapagkainan. Yay! May mas 
malaking problema na naman. Nakautang ang pamilya. Who, would, who among you would admit na may utang? Just be honest, may utang ako rin. Nahihiya ka yung may sabi may utang. Marami na sa'yo na dito kayo dahil may utang eh. At first you came, nag-utang ka. Diba? May utang tayo. Ikaw si challenge, diba? Pinagpupuyatan mo. Sige, harap po ay overtime para mabayaran agad yung utang. Mas lalang na naman. Dahil hindi lang yung utang. Andiyan na yung maniningil. Ano pa? Mas grabe pa? Wala kang ibabayad? Ano ang kukunin sa iyo? And, uh, that's now your your flesh and your blood. And that's your family. In the olden times, yung uso ng slavery ba? Na kung wala kang ibayad, pwede yung pamilya mo ibayad. Okay sana kung yung matigas ulo ng asawa mo ibayad. <laughs> Yes. No, it's not a joke. You know, there are families, dahil sa problema, parang okay lang na mawala ang asawa. Hindi mo ka ano-ano yan eh. Yes, that's not your blood. You just had a relationship. Maybe at one time you shared life relationship together, but then my brother is hindi malayan, parang okay lang. You do not miss na dahil may problema. But your son, your anak, you speak for yourselves, your mothers. You know what I mean. Mahirap pag ang pinag-usapan ay anak. That's your very own flesh and blood. Pag may masasaktan ang anak mo, you try to defend, you try to protect, right? Mas lalo kung kukunin na pang bayan ng utang. Ano ka ang klaseng mother? Kung papayagan mo. Diba? And you see how how desperate the situation of this woman. But let's continue to read this story and we will see what happened. Uh, we will see how how God would work a miracle in the life of this woman. And so, she expressed her fear and her worry sa servant na Panginoon. How many of you approaches a pastor for prayer? Na pag may problema, ang first na maisip, Lord, I need prayer. Somebody to pray for me. Oh, bihila. Okay, ito ang isang test sa atin. Kasi ang Pilipino nga naman, marunong mag-remedyo. Diba? Lulis na to admit na hindi na kaya, sige, mangungutang pa rin. Nagre-remedyo ka. Nagpatanggan niya kaya, mag-remedyo ka pa rin. At dati mang ilakot, ibiyag dati, uras dati, at no, dati mang bayad utang. Instead of seeking spiritual advice from pastors, church leaders, you try to do it yourself. I did it my way. Konektado. <laughs> Konektado to. Yes. Now, immediately you see, ah, the prophet, the servant of God, did not have to wait for her to cry out all the more. Crying out, she was so desperate. Natip nai nai na anong tao dun? Naramdaman na servant ng Panginoon yung yung nararamdaman ng mother. Sumagot agad si Elisha. Anong mabasa natin? Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Parang kakaibang tulong niya na. <laughs> Alam niyang may apat na problema niya ng nanay. Tatanungin, how can I help you? Hindi pa inantay kung ano yung sasagot ng mother. Tapos biglang sinabi ng pastor, anong nasa sayo? Tell me what's in your house. Pero nawala yung iyak ng mother. Itong pastor na magpapatulong ako sana. Imbis na ipag-pray ako agad. O lagyan ng weeks yung sugat ko. Tatanungin ko, anong nasa sa akin? Anong nasa bahay? Alam na nga niya, common sense, wala nga eh. 
Nakautan ako, nakautan ang anak ko, ang asawa ko ngayon, ang mga anak ko kukunin pang bayad na gagawing slaves. Parang na-confuse yung, yung widow. She, she stopped to think. Let us try to realize this story, kung anong paano nagtatrabaho ang Panginoon dito. Tinanong ng Elisha, how can I help you? What do you have in your house? Sumagot ng widow, your servant, ibig sabi na ako, sabi ng babae, your servant has nothing there at all. Wala talaga. So she tried to explain herself na walang wala talaga. Wala nga eh, walang mapagkain, walang ipapakain sa mga anak. Kaya she was, parang kahit masakit man, she was willing to give her sons. That's all that was left of her. She and her sons. But then, meron ba? But she said, except a little oil. Ah, meron pala. Ang alam ko dito, Pilipina ito eh. Why? Mahilig tayong marunong tayong magdahilan. Pautang na, sister. Wala, wala. Sige na, kahit five dollars lang. Para may pang taxi. Ay, wala. Exacto lang pang tram. No? Di ba? Pag may umutang sa'yo, how do we respond? Bibihira yung magtatarong, magkano kailangan mo? Sometimes we have our own reservations. That is how we are in the human nature. Na pag may gustong kunin sa'yo, nagdadahilan ka. Oh, this lady responded, I have nothing! I have nothing! Tapos naisip niya, ay, naalala niya, meron I just have a jar of oil. Naalala niya. Napa, pinaalala ng Panginoon sa kanya. I have a jar of oil. I have nothing but just a jar of oil. Wala, hindi tayo kumagamit ng jar of oil sa mga ngayon, di ba? But in the olden days, nung araw, oil was very important. It was very, a very important item. Pwedeng pang-trade yan, pamili, dahil walang pera noon, ang bili mo. Oil, even olive oil lang sa, sa Europe, ay sa, sa Israel. It's very, that's what they used to make the very expensive perfumes. Remember the story about Jesus and Mary Magdalene? Na Mary Magdalene poured a very expensive fragrant oil in the feet, in the, uh, feet of Jesus and she used her hair to wipe the feet of Jesus, to anoint Jesus' feet. Oil is also used kayong mga nagluluto sa kusina. Diba? Instead na yung lard o yung uh, corn oil, coconut oil, uh, olive oil, maganda. It's very edible and healthy. Ano? Ang dami ni uses ng oil. Oil, they use it pang hilot ngay. Ano yun? Pang... Pang hilong? Pang, pang hilot? Basta hindi pang hilot. They use oil in, in Hong Kong, in Kwatlo. Kwanlong oil sa atin sa Philippines, efficacy oil. Meron pa sa baryo, coconut oil. Di ba? Pang, if you are, may sukat pa, they are swelling, you use it to heal, to heal the body. Ang daming gamit ng oil. So we could imagine na they had, this woman had been preserving itong oil ay isang jar lamang yan na parang yan na ang naiwan na kayamanan niya more expensive. Imagine, I could not imagine it is more expensive than the two sons. Because the two sons yun ang gustong ibayad. E yung oil ang maiwan. She declared earlier na wala, wala, wala siya. But earlier than that, sabi niya na andyan yung tarawang anak. There are people who could afford to let go and forget their families to sacrifice their families. Na walang halaga ang pamilya mas lalo kung may hiduhaan. There's misunderstandings between uh, broken relationships. Uh, 
Ang ganda yung teaching ni Pastor Melchor sa Macau. Kanina ng umaga, about restoring a relationship with God. And many times, this is a test to even Christians. Yung ating mga relasyon sa ating pamilya, ang asawa na testing niya. Ang relasyon sa nanay, sa tatay, mga mga naglalabanan. Siguro may mga some of you, may, may napilit na pumunta ng Hong Kong kahit ayaw ng parents. Meron niyo yung mga parents, sige, ilapod ang tinuang na, isalda na, itarong na, tapos makapag-abroad ka, di ba? Because of the relationship. Your relationship to your children, you want to take care of your children, kaya nagsakripisyo ka, you come here abroad to work for your families because you have a relationship, something of value that you want to take care of your family, your wife, your husband, your children. Tama mo ba? Amen. Yes. It, there's always a reason that yung relationship mo to those close to you has something, has some meaning in your life that makes you make decisions. Are you alive? Amen. Okay, let you, you just stay with me. Uh, as in, insan lang ito. Okay? Uulitin ko na naman pag may nakita kong magsusuya up nita. But anyway, I'm, I'm trying to let you imagine and put yourself in the situation of this video. Yung kanyang sitwasyon. At sabi niya talagang na wala na wala. Anything of value, wala. And it's good that the God has reminded her that meron itong jar of oil. Now let's continue. Tell me what do you have? I'll go back please. What you have in your house, your servant has nothing there at all. Sabi niya, walang wala. She has, she, she even forgot that she has a house. Dapat yun ang ibabayad, hindi yung anak. Napakagaling ng sitwasyon nito. What do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all. She said, so ibig sabihin, walang furniture, walang kama, walang, walang tables, walang walang wala except a jar of oil. So I, I believe her. Except a jar of oil. Next verse, please. Elisha said, Go around. Verse 3. Go around and ask your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Ano ba ito? Nangbibiro ba itong servant? Kailangan kong pera ang bayad sa utang. Tatanungin, ano na sa'yo? Sabi ko, may oil. Alam niyang nakautang ako. Ang advice ng Elisha, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. In, in New King James, sabi, baro. Nakautang ka na nga. Mangungutang ka pa. <laughs> what kind of solution is that? Ha? Alam ng Elisha, nakautang yung baro. Tapos ang advice ng servant of God, punta ka mag... Kapalin mo yung mukha mo. Punta ka... Ay, uh, kapalan mo yung mukha mo. Puskulun, di mo pa. Ang kagutang, ang kagbulo, di... Ang alupay na jars. Nyati ko natin yung lukano, garapon. Sa Tagalog, garapon pa rin. Tiguro, Lata. Buti. Sa sagana, jar pa rin. Busi. Ano? Ngayon, yung modern time, modern time ng, ng jar or busi o buti. Buti ko na. Buti. Sa Tagalog, but, buti. Sa Mountain Province. Hindi, hindi lang yung butilya. Sa kanta na ay shortcut ng butilya, yung buti. Pero buti yung lata ng mantika na ginagawang pang saklo, tiganong nga eh. Nagigib ng tubig, nalagay sa kawayan at nagkabilaan. Buti, gano'n na. So, ang modern time yung container. Di ba? Bihira, may, mahal na ngayon ang lata ang napakamaraming doon sa isang nila container, plastic. Mabang ka at bulong, punta ka at manghiram ka sa mga kapitbahay mo. Manghiram ka ba dyan sa Hong Kong? <laughs> nang, nang pwede mong mahiraman na container or vessels or jars. Go to your neighbors. Ask all your neighbors. Sabihin, sabihin na natin, all. All. Oh, kanina, napakinggan ko, everything. 
all ngayon, all naman ngayon ginamit dito, all your neighbors ibig sabihin, awan ti lagpasan pindahal ang aming neta lahat ng madadaanan mong pwede mong mapaghiraman ng neighbor mo ng container, hiramin mo kaldiro yan o ano tapos awalang butas paghiraman mo, manghiram ka do not ask for just a few ibig sabihin marami Kung, kung ikaw ang nangungutang, pag first time mo mangutang, malaki ba ang inutang mo? Hindi. Yeah, Kaya, konti lang. Malit lang. <coughs> Dahil sa nahihiya ka. Diba? Pero pag kumapag na ang mukha. <laughs> Dahil sa matinding. Hindi, <laughs> totoo. Totoo itong sinasabi ko. Lahat tayo totoo kahit sa, dahil sa matinding pangangailan. There's a reason. Kaya nakalimutan mo ng itsura mo. Nakalimutan ng sitwasyon, ang iniisip mo yung kailangan mong utangin. Kaya habang tumatagal, kumakapal mo mukha mo. Mas malaki ang tangan. Kaya tignan niyo to. Alam ng servant ng Panginoon, nagpukulang yung, yung widow. Alam niya, makapal na yung mukha niya. Ibig sabihin, malaki, malala yung sitwasyon. Kaya total, nandiyan ka na sa sitwasyon na yan, ibig sabihin, I, I'm trying to reword it, nandiyan ka na sa sitwasyon. Gamitin mo yung sitwasyon, pumunta ka at manghiram ka ng mas marami pang jars or containers. If I were the widow, I would leave that servant. Miss, <laughs> nabigyan na ako ng $1,000 dollars pag-uutangin pa ako, dadalhin pa ako sa ibang lugar. I, I'm confused. I just need his prayer. I just need your prayer. Tapos pagkatrabahoin ako na manghiram, I don't understand. Saan ko pagamitin ng mas marami pang garapon o buti o butilya o kaldero o konti. Ano? Pangagamitan ko. Don't you realize that many of us when we are in a situation we do not understand, we get confused. Mas lalo mo, ang dami mo nang iniisip. And we tend, we tend, we always tend to forget that there's, there is God. Ano pa ang ginagawa natin na ugali ng Pilipino? Ginagawa natin ang Diyos na parang vending machine. Automatic. Kailangan natin sagot. Di po ba? Uwin po na yung matanak. Amen. Oo, totoo naman yan. Pag may nga pangangailangan ka, Lord, I need it na. Ngayon, gusto kong bayaran yung utang. Gumawa ka ng paraan ngayon. Yan ang gusto natin. Yan ang hilig natin. We don't realize that it is a process. Sa inyo na nag-a-apply kayo ng Hong Kong, sino yung automatic? Mayroon ba? There was a process. Sabi ng agency, kapunta ka, mag-virus ka muna sa mga hindi lang. Di ba? Pagdating muna naman ito, oh, mag-practice ka muna. Bago ka introduce sa amo. All of us, even when we enroll our children to school, there's a process. Hindi automatic po, mga kapatid, ang salvation. Hindi rin napakinggan nyo, hindi rin automatic na ang dyan makuhulog ang bendisyon, ang biyaya sa inyong harapan. Lord, I need rice. Sa <laughs> sakong so, bigas. Alam mo kung i-apply natin yung gano'n? Siguro mauntog ka. Or, hindi mo makayanan yung bigat ng 50 kilos na bigas. Buti dito sa Hong Kong, may gawa silang 10 kilos, 20 kilos, 5 kilos rice. Uh, may measure. Gano'n din ang blessing sa ating buhay. May measure yan. But, and, and why am I saying this? So that you will come to realize that even the testings in our life, God allows it, di ba? Marati natin napapakinggan, God does not allow things to happen in your life that you cannot handle, right? You hurdle one challenge, na kayanan mo yung, ah, bibigyan ka ng mas malaking hurdle na naman. Na challenge, di po ba? Yes. Ang pamuno ng video di Jekwa, meron yung kanta, ni Pastor Melchor. Uh, hindi ko alam kung nakanta niya dito yung manga at kalabasa. 
Napakinggan nyo na yan? Ah, yung mga hindi nakarin yung mamaya Subaybayan nyo Ipaalala nyo mamaya Para yun yung special song Na Connected rin yun eh Yung dito sa mensahe Let's continue please So sabi niya Kahit hindi na naintindihan yung Bilhin ng servant Go, go and borrow uh, Vessels, anong jars From everywhere, all around To all, from all your neighbors Verse 3 pa rin From all your neighbors Do not just gather a few But gather all Gather all, kung ano yung makaya Yung uh, hiramin Now in verse 4 Then, what's the next step? Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Before we go to this verse 4, I'm glad that dito sa Hong Kong, ang isang malaking bagay na, na ministry nyo na mga kapatiran that has become a challenge to our churches in the Philippines is your evangelism ministry. Marapakad rin mo ba? When we heard what, when we heard from the bishop what God is doing amongst you here now, I believe that most of you, most of you, you would not be here if nobody invited you. Say amen. 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 Somebody invited you. Somebody shared your testimony. Some way or somehow you heard God's word from somebody. It may be an invitation you came here to church. You may have heard or you received a trap. Sa chapter road or sa sidewalk or sa department store. Or even before you came to Hong Kong, you heard already about the importance of having a spiritual life. But somebody, somehow, some way, you came to the Lord, the Lord Jesus, because somebody invited you. May not effort yan. And we are glad, we are happy to know na ang ginagawa ng Panginoon dito sa Hong Kong ay... Uh, I don't know now, dahil sa SARS, ay, tawag doon, Corona, wala na street preaching. Dahil sa yung rally-rally na na-cancel mga schedules ng street preaching, doon sa Macau na, kahapon, ay yan, yeah, the other day and yesterday, we were not able to use the hall ng, ng AG Church dahil pati yung pastor, matakot. At wala na. So, we had to use yung uh, worship center natin. But for certain reasons, there is a way how God will show us and usher us in. Amen? Para tayo mga nandito ngayon. And so, we have a responsibility. Just like what I said, kayo, yung mga nakarinig na ng mensahe ng Pinoon, you know the importance of salvation in your life, you wanted to share it with others, and that's why that pushes us to evangelize. This borrowing of jars talk about the importance of evangelism. And if you are taking notes, it's important to show and see that God, like the servant of God, was telling this widow, you know, when you borrow from your neighbors, hinihiram mo yung oras, yung isang sister para makinig sa'yo. Hinihiram mo yung effort niya para mapunta dito sa church. Amen? And you know, when you say you're borrowing, obligasyon natin yan. If we are in need, if we have a situation, obligation natin na mag-effort. Effort, sabihin nga natin. Effort. Right? And we need to do something. It's not enough that we have known the Lord Jesus Christ, that we are we're called to be Christians, we are members of free believers, and we just sit down and fold our hands. It doesn't stop there, mga kapatid. We have a responsibility to reach out to souls. And that is borrowing the jars, the empty jars. Hello. Amen. Now, next instruction ng, ng servant of God, then go inside and shut the door behind you, you and your sons. Saan mo dadalhin yung mga jars? Ipapasok sa bahay. Okay. Earlier, tinanong ng servant of God, what do you have in your house? Sabi, anong sagot? Wala. Are you okay? Amen. Sumagot niyong widow, sabi niya, walang-wala, except the jar of oil. Now, nagkaroon ng idea yung servant of God, ah, a jar of oil. Now, go and borrow as many you could borrow the jars. Maraming garapon, maraming lata, maraming 
uh, buti, maraming busi, maraming garapon, garapon, I mentioned garapon. And bring it inside your house and shut the door behind you, you and your sons. What's the next step? Now you start to pour oil in all those jars. The second step, the first step was to go and borrow, right? The second step is to, no, bring it first inside your house. <laughs> bring it first inside your house. Meaning when you bring inside those jars, do you want those jars to stay to stay mabuti at madumi? Before you bring it inside, kailangan linisin, di ba? Hello? Amen. Pag mga may container, and if you are instructed to pour something of value, na yung oil ay napakamahal. At you, before pouring it, you want to make sure that that container, that jar, that vessel you are borrowing is clean. Hello? Amen. Yeah, tama. And that's why, sabi ko, may responsibility tayo. As Christians, we put ourselves in the place of the video. So the second step here is when we are instructed to go inside the house. What do we call the house of God? Not the house of prayer. Amen? The worship place, our church. Yung house dito for a Christian, the house that is being called is where we hold worship services. In this case, this widow had a house. Doon sila naninirahan ng mga anak. At an instruction, bring it inside and shut the door. Shutting the door means we need to improve our prayer life. We need to improve on our prayer life because many times, ito siguro ang nakalimutan ng widow kaya gawin kanina. Nagpapanik na siya kanina. Di ko ba? Nagpapanik nung nakita niya si pastor sa labas. Sumisigaw. Sumisigaw. Nagpapatulong. Nakalimutan niya mag-pray. Now, we are being reminded that if there is a need, the importance of prayer. But I'm just mentioning this na parang at random so that you could write it down, you could share this message sa mga kasama niyo. Okay? Now, in next verse, in verse 4, sabi niya, go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. And the next step there is pour oil into all the jars and as each is filled, watch, as each is filled, habang napupuno yan, jar, put it to one side. This, this talks about specific instructions. And many times, pati kayo mga kongyan, you are tested inside the house. If you do not know how to follow instructions, what do you expect? Napapagalitan. Di ba? Yes, and it's what we teach our pastors. Dito, dito, that is what they do not like of me. Kaya Pastor Harold, dahil nauyong ang kanyo. I tend to raise my voice. Paulit, ulit sinasabi. Instruction na naman. Pag nakita yung anino ni Pastor Harold na lumalapit yan sa bulangan, andyan si Pastor Instruction. Andyan na naman. The instruction is, as each jar is filled, put it to one side. Itabi. Isang tabi. Diba? Put it in a safe place. Next verse, in verse 5. Then she left him, agad-agad, sumunod, and afterward shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. Tuloy-tuloy. Ginawa. Yung instruction. Naghiram sila ng maraming jars. Pinasok, lininisan, pinasok sa bahay. Sinimulan lagyan ng oil. Saan nang galing yung oil? Ha? Yung nasa kanya. Diba? At first, she was confused. Saan po gagamitin ang maraming jars? Ngayon, she heard the instruction ng servant of God, ah, pang gagamitin, pang lalagyan ng oil. All the more, she becomes confused. Paano po gagamitin niya na pakalait na baso ng oil? Ilalagay ko, lalagyan ko, pupunuin ko lahat ng napalalaking jars? Would you not question? Would you not have doubts? Na, how, how could I use this small jar of oil and just pour all these 
jars that I borrowed. But you don't see that she questioned there. Wala kayong mababasa dyan na nagtanong. Many times the bishop would ask me, then, you do not have to question, just do it. Sabihin na natin, just do it. Tama ba? Alam niyo ba kung bakit ang well-known na isang brand ng rubber shoes na kalaban ng Adidas ay ah, yung Nike? Ang motto nila, isa lang, just do it. Mas maganda pa yung logo ng Nike. Yes. How many of you have a check mark from your amo? <laughs> Meaning, check mark, approval. You're a good komyan. Okay ka. Good. Check. Why? Yeah, it is your kong, your among that will give you the check mark, the approval. If you did your work well. Tama? Yes. Just do it. Ang kayo nga bulag-bulagol na ganit. Ang kayo nga pinapatid kayo nyo. Ang yung ipilit ang nasa sa inyong karunungan lawan. Doon tayo, we miss the blessing. Why? May instruction na gawin. Nagkwe-question tayo. Ang bis na gawin agad. Nagkwe-question tayo. Kaya ang daming natetesting na leaders. Ang daming natetesting na pastors. Why? Pag may pinagawa ng overseer o nakakataas, kahit na walang karunungan yung overseer at may pinagawa may instruction, magtatanong pa sa isipan, ano ka? Mas marunong ako sa'yo ah. Ba't mo ako ibabaon na? Ano <laughs> Tagalog na din? Ano pa? Ba't, ba't mo ako utusan? Mas matagal ako dito ah. Ano ka? Ano ako? Hero? Mas marami akong kinain. daming pagtatanong natin. But you see the, the obedience of this lady. She left him and afterward shut the door behind her and her sons. Then they brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. Basahin na natin yun. She kept pouring. She kept pouring. 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 Pouring is an action. When you pour, you need to do effort. I do not have to expound on that. Na sabi ni Pastor Melcher, if this is the altar, if you recognize that this place is a place of prayer where God answers your prayer, you need to keep pouring. Amen. Hindi kayo nakokontento sa isang timbang tubig na panghigo. You need continuous flow for when you take a bath. You understand now? Amen. You could not enjoy soup of what you boil, whether it's vegetables or meat, if there was not much water that you pour. Simple meaning of flowing. When you pour, it means something needs to be poured out and to flow. It does not say put, because put means a lamp. Tapos na. And many times, people in the church, even leaders, think, Nandun na po ito, pledge ko, gusto na ni last year ni Jay. Who would say that to your family? Ginmata nga, matun, di may sana kabahan ni di last year. Umanay matun, ah, ni Jay nga ka lang, kapamilya. Bumili naman na ako ng isang kaban bigas eh. 2019. Siguro tama na yun na pagkain ng aking pamilya. Ba't ako magbibigay na naman pang bili ng isang kilong bagas? Bigas. Common sense? Right? It's the same in the spiritual, mga kapatid. You know, people want blessings, blessings, blessings to continue. 
in the physical sa material Diyo na gusto natin yung material tuloy tuloy How many times do you eat in one week? Huh? Many times. Just try to think about that. Now, how many times do you come to worship God in one week? Just start to think about it. We need to keep pouring if we want the blessings. Amen? It does not matter. How small that jar you have with you. The direction na ako sa mensahe, it does not matter how small that you have. It does not matter even how big and kadami ng jars na kailangan mong punuin. You think that what with you is limited na very small, but the instructions just keep pouring, pouring to fill those jars. Pouring to keep the, fill the lives of those you want to bring to the Lord. Amen. We do not stop. It's not because that we we gave our pledge last year. That we do not want to support anymore our family. Tuloy tuloy mga kapatid. Amen. Sabi nga natin, tuloy tuloy. Ang mas maganda ata yun, Pastor. Isa yung everything. Kasi nag-testing yung everything. <laughs> Sabi, how many of you has given everything? Walang magtataas eh. Nakitesting tayo. Pero parang mas maganda yung Sino may gustong tuloy-tuloy? Amen! Tuloy-tuloy. Oh, tuloy-tuloy na pag-support. Hindi lang yung tuloy-tuloy na support. Pero yung ating pag-support. We need to keep pouring. Amen? Next verse. In verse 6. What happened? Ah, oh, yan na. Yung resulta. Yan na yung nakita natin. Yung resulta ng effort ng mother. At hindi lang yung mother, but yung mga anak. Siyempre, if you have a family, you want to involve your family, right? If you are in trouble, you have you don't want as much as possible na hindi mahirapan mga anak mo, your family. But there are times that you have to endeavor to encourage them to to help carry the burden. Ha? Natutulong mga anak. Anong tinulong ng mga anak dito? At this time, they gather the jars. Right? Ngayon, iisang nagpupor ang nanay. The result, yung obedience niya, ito, verse 6. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, Bring me another. Magpasok pa pa ng isa. Isa pa, you hand me one more jar. One more vessel, one more container. Meron pa ba? Kandiro pa. Bring me another one. But he replied, sabi ng anak, There is not a jar left. Wala na nanay. Tapos. Puno na. I could not, I could not spell the, I could not imagine the, the joy of the sun. Na they were amazed. At first they were worried. Saan na kukuha ng oil na ipopour sa maraming jars? Tapos siguro when the mother was pouring, sige, next jar, pour, next jar, pour again, next jar. Hanggang naubos. I could see that it changed yung situation nung bago Dumating yung servant of God, yung nangangailangan sila. Ngayon, the situation now turns from that need to yung joy na nagagalap because they were pouring that oil. Hindi humihinto, hindi humihinto yung pouring hanggang napuno lahat yung jars. How many of you could imagine the situation? Amen. Na may, may galap, may contentment, nakikita yung saya sa mukha ng mag -ina. And there's not a jar left and the oil stopped flowing. Now, there's another step that happened next verse in verse 7. She went and told the man of God. Sinong pumunta? Yung widow. Pumunta ng report. We could see here the, 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 the uh, principles of submission. And ano yung tinuturo ni Bishop dito? Serving under authority. Yohanna bukbuko na ni Gawis. Ah, she had to report. She saw on herself that it was her responsibility to tell the servant of God, I received the blessing. Amen. Nung una, ang sinabi lamang, may problema ako, pastor. Panalangin ako. But she was given instructions to obey. But it did not just end there. Ah, we see that this widow 
Alam niya yung kanyang obligasyon. Yes. She did not just keep it to herself. Yung good news na may milagro na nangyari sa loob ng bahay. Amen. She did not just keep it to herself. She had to go and tell the pastor, tell the leader, report to the bishop. And I'm blessed when we arrived last night, si Pastor Melcher, ring. It was already 3 o'clock in the morning. Bishop, dumating na kami dito sa Hong Kong. Thank you for your prayers. We arrived safe and sound. We're having now our coffee. Ah, that's so good. That's good. You now rest so that you have strength for tomorrow. <laughs> Please, na-receive na yung blessing and report the overseer. And that's how we should be. If we are blessed, we do not just keep our testimonies to ourselves. Yeah. When we have Christ in our life, obligation natin to share that light, to share that asin. Amen. To share that grace of God that we have received, that salvation. Amen. Yeah. And that's why, that's, that is how we ought to grow na magpadami. And by reporting and keeping the good news to ourselves. Nasabi ko nung Tuesday, ang ugali, ang tinuturo sa Sagada Mountain Province, may remoto nila. We should not keep the good to ourselves. Kaya ko na natin i-urot niya. Adi na pupuko na ng lewis. Now, much more better. What shall you do? If you do not keep it to yourself. Ah, kung na natin ituloy niya, ipuri asta ko ng lewis. Let us not let us share what we have. The good that is in us, we share it now to others. Amen. Palakpakan tayo man niya ako. So this, this woman, this widow, ah, she was so full of joy. And she went and told the man of God and he said, Go. The next thing now you should do is go sell the oil and pay your debts. Wow. Hindi na kailangan palang mangutang ng pera. Hindi pala kailangan mag-overtime at mag-overtime. Alam niyo sa Philippines, araw ng... Ano to? Araw ng worship? Ano di ano paano? Aldaw, di parang gayaw? Ha? Tinitignan ko yung mga upuan sa iba, bakit bakanti, tapos sinahanap ko mga ibang muka, ba't wala? And then somebody would tell me, Napanda na bilang ti mais, Pastor! <laughs> Pumunta sila na bilang ng mais. Nahanap ko si brother. Saan si brother? Nanganap ti baboy na ka no, Pastor! <laughs> yung pinag-pray ko, lumaki, maganda yung pagsikog niya, naganap, haalan nga nakikimo. <laughs> Nangyaman din. May mayat ng awan ikakararag na bago. They miss, they miss the day of God, the hour of worship. They pray for blessings of their bukid. Ang kanilang bangkak na mais. We pray for them. They get blessed. Now they receive much blessings. They forget the day of God. I think it's similar here. Because of the desire to work for a dollar more, more, more. You know, we tend to forget now the source of the blessings. Diba? But you may hate me after this message, pero ang tatamaan dapat magbago. Dapat mag-improve sa commitment. Amen? So, it's good. We are taught to report to give, we, we thought to share what is good, what we have received. So she shared this good news to the servant of God. Now said, the instructions, go sell the oil. Ipipenta nyo na yung oil na nandyan na you were pouring and you filled all the vessels. Napuno lahat yan, you go and sell. Because that oil is of value. Uh, her need of her family, her needs were met. And she, she was able to sell and I uh, sell and uh, pay her debts. Amen? Pay her debts and you and your sons can live on what is left. It stops there. The story of that uh, widow and her son stops there. But let, let us see. Let's go back and see what were the lessons that we learned from this story. First is many times when we are asked 
if you have your notebooks, it's nice that you write it down. Many times the question is, what do you have in your house? How do we respond? How do we answer? Are we willing to be honest enough? To be honest enough and tell and confess? Many times, sometimes, may ating pagkukulang, meron tayong pagkukulang. Meron tayong nagawa na gusto na tinatago natin. Ayaw natin i-confess. Ayaw natin sabihin, baka mabuking. Pero there's nothing that is hidden in the sight of God, right? Lahat, the truth will always come out. But it's better to confess and say yung, yung talagang kapasidad mo. Kung ikaw ay nagkukulang, that's what God wants to hear from you. Kung ikaw ay may kasalanan, there's nothing wrong in confessing and asking His forgiveness unless unless you want to continue keep on sinning. And you will never experience the love of God. Yes, God has mercy. But to, to receive that love, yung continuing flowing ng, ng, ng pagmamahal ng Panginoon, ng kanyang provision sa inyong buhay, you know, we need to let go of what we have. And that is, it's up to us to answer the question. What do you have in your house? It is our house we are the ones in charge of. We are in charge of our life. We are in charge of our, our families. We are actually in control even of our sahod and our money and ang lahat ng properties natin. It's all up to us to be so honest and say, Lord, I have my life. Lord, I have my house. I'm offering for Bible study. Lord, I have a car, I have a curriculum, I may use it to go on outreach. Last Tuesday, I talked about stewardship of what we have. We're not truly serving God if we withhold things na pwedeng gamitin ng Panginoon. Even your life, how could you say that you could bless others if you withhold and zip your mouth and do not want to share God's word? God has healed you. Hindi ka marunong mag mag magkasaba, mag-share, but you could invite the person to the church or bring bring her to McDonald and invite the pastor and have coffee together. And in that way, the pastor will share God's word. Sa sa inyong friend. What do you have? What talent do you have? Anong pwedeng kakayahan mo? God is not asking more. Just like this widow. Although the servant of God was aware of the situation of this widow, but then he had to ask, if somebody asks you, if God asks us, what do you have? It's all up to us to be honest and to confess. Amen. Hindi kailangan pilitin yan eh. You know, this woman became so honest because she was in need. This widow was so honest because she was in need. May matinding pangangailangan. You see the common, common uh, influence sa mga maraming pera? You believe it or not? Yung mga maraming pera, they tend to lie. Right? Yung mga sobra-sobrang kayamanan, there are hidden sins. Could you reflect on people you know? Ayaw tumulong. Bihira ang maraming pera na gustong open na tumulong. We went to Macau. Ano pala? Sin City? Ano? Sin City. It's a Sin City. Lugar ng kasalanan. Narinig ko doon na doon pala na hindi lang pera at tinaka, ang, hindi lang mga kasino ang marami nakakalat doon. Ang daming hotels, ang daming yung sabi nyo, pornographic materials along the road, along the street. Ang galing ng Panginoon, ginamit ang corona. <laughs> ang daming nakasarang kasino. Yeah, almost all of the hotels, walang ilaw, walang Walang tao. Ang ganda sana, parating nandyan si Panginoon. Ha? 
hindi sana hindi sana aalis ang corona yes because God has a purpose ihihinto pala ang kasalanan sa isang lugar you remember Sodom and Gomorrah yes it was a sin city and God used a plague right na para bigyan ng warning mga tao so fear not mga kapatid We should not fear the corona. We should fear God that sends the corona. Amen. And so we could see the situation. Uh, we need to be open. We do not withhold. We do not reserve things from God. When God asks you, you should be willing to let go. Amen. I tell you, brothers and sisters, na mas madali kasi pag if it is God that is calling, if it is God that is speaking to you, do not withhold mas nariglikat na yun. Among the aso, alam niyo ang aso? Na na may tali. Habang humihila niya, humihila na sasaktan nila para hindi hihinto. Tahol ng tahol niya ang aso. But if that animal, that dog, will learn to sit down and be calm, uh, it will help it to enjoy the presence of the amo. Right? But if we are one that always struggles, It is not God that puts a chain around our neck. We are the ones. That's why we tend to struggle. Because we do not know how to be calm and let go. Okay? So, there's one lesson. Second, tinanong, what are those you have in your house? Many times, we say that a jar is just a jar. We should consider that That's why, of course, this verse, Pastor, yung vessels of honor and vessel of dishonor. In a house, there are vessels for honor or for vessels for dishonor. But it's up to us kung anong tingin natin sa isang jar. For us, most likely, ngayon, present day, jar is just a jar, a container, ordinary, right? But this woman, what the jar was of value, Binigyan ng malaking halaga yan. Na kahit po kaunti yung, yung laman na oil, it was so very important. It was the only artifact or gamit niya sa bahay na naiwan. So it's all up to us. Even if we see things of, they are weak, we see lives of people na nagkukulang. In this time, the jar, the vessels, the jars na sabi hiniram, it represents people, the lives of people. A jar would represent the life, your life, the life of your son, the life of your family, the life of your neighbors. Jars would represent containers, something that needs to be filled. Amen? And so, we will see later on the meaning, the significance of this vessel, this jar. Kung bakit ito ay ginamit ng Panginoon to pour that oil in the other jars na hiniram ng itong widow. You know, in Kalinga, when I visited Bangan, andito si Pastor Aldrin. Sino mga taga-Kalinga dito? You know? Andun, oh, Sister Mercy. I entered this house. Kala ko kung ito lang bahay na pinasukan ko. Ang near the kitchen, magkarapit kasi ang pintuan ng salas at uh, exit sa kitchen at near the door of the kitchen and then later on I found out that in most houses sa Kalinga malapit rin doon in part, some part of the kitchen nagka-pile tuon-tuon uh, nakapile up ang maraming klaseng sizes ng kaldero anong tagalog ng kaldero? kaldero oo nga, kaldero <laughs> kaldero yung malaking kaldero Medium size kaldero, small size, paliit, 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 nakapakong na niya. Kung hindi nakapakong pataob, naka... Nakatihaya. Nakatihaya. Tihaya, ayun. Nakatihaya na may takip, lahat. Naka, nakapaila. Basta, kung yun ay aluminum pots, tapos next, yung made of... Uh, Kasi yung bakal ng kaldero na yan. 
Stainless. Stainless pot. Mayroon din ang pots. May stainless pots. Mayroon yung... Cast iron, lahat ng pots sa karamihan, cast iron. Yan. Ang mo yung common, common characteristics yung napakakintag. Lahat mo sa gilid. E sa kwitan, hindi uh, mo matanggal yung itim. May mga konting itim eh. Yun ang naiinitan ng apoy. Eh. Diba? Pero lahat, sabi ko, anong, bakit kaya dito sa atin, we would keep that sa most houses, kahit anong probinsya hindi mo nili-display ang inyong kaliro. Pero sa kalinga, sa upper kalinga, sa tinglayan, naka-display, nakikita mo. Yung kapag eh, main entrance, andyan na yung mga kaliro. Kahit manggali ka sa kusina, andyan na yung kaliro. I could not keep myself from asking the house owner, ano yung purpose ng kaliro? Yung pakita mo yung kayamanan mo? Partly, sa upper kalinga in some provinces yun ang parang magpapatunay sa yung yun ang kayamanan yung pamilya but it has another deeper meaning the pots are displayed for the purpose and reason that they are available to be led to be borrowed kaba sabi ko Nagkasat man dito yung tinglayan. Andiyan ang kayamanan nila. Hindi nila ipinatako. Na gusto nilang ipahiram. Bakit doon, uso ang manghiram? <laughs> manghiram ng kaldero, kayo mo. Diba ako nasa isipan niya? Manghiram ng kaldero, pero pagkatapos mong ginaki, ibabalik mo rin kung gaano kakintaw Diba? Totoo yun, Pastor? Habang sa tanudan. O, oh, totoo rin pala sa tanudan. There is this quality ng kalinga na handa ngayon na ipaidan. Ano yung tagalog ng paidan? Hindi nila ipagdamot yung ano na sa kanila. Kahit napakaliit na bahay, napakalakay bahay, pinasupan kong several houses ng kalinga sa upper kalinga. Sabi ko, pwede pong gamit ko din sa amin sa bagyo ah. Pero kaya lang, baka magalit ang misis kong nilabas ko lang. <laughs> Pati rice cooker, kung ilang sizes niya. Rice cooker ni Pastora Dominga na nanggaling dito. Malaki yun, hindi nagamit na ni Sabulano. Pero may ganyan na rice cooker, may ganyan. Siguro kung i-display ko, aba, mas maraming visitors. Ah. Yun ang effect ng ano, may nagpapahiram at willing kang mag magpahiram ng inyong gamit. At yun rin pala, during occasions pala rin, may mga okasyon talagang kulang yung gamit ng isang pamilya. Pupunta lang sa isang bahay, hindi na kailangan magtanong, ituturo, pukunin na. <laughs> Kasi ang galing yung, yung kultura na yun, may natututunan tayong mensahe. You make yourself available. What do you have in your house? That is the question. Whether bago kang nananampalataya o matagal ka ng member ng church, what do you have? God does not look at our abilities at yung kagalingan at karunungan mo. God looks on your heart. What do you have in your heart? What's inside your house? Hello? Isa lang yung tanong. Next, you will see that, you see this, let's read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 to 21. In a large house, there are articles not only of gold and silver, ito yung mga mamahali na dami na, but also of wood and clay meaning of lower value. Wood. Wood is agoy na nasusunog. Clay, nababasag. Clay pots. Right? Kaya kung may stainless ka, may clay pots, ceramic. Some are for noble purposes, 
yung pang-display lamang, noble. Pag may bisita, nilalabas yung breakable na ceramics. Pero pag pagsat mo plastic, <laughs> inamun. <laughs> diba? Tama? Diba? Pero tignan nyo yung mga bahay ng mga among nyo. Pare-parehas, bisita ko sila. Ah, Chinese wear. Diba? Kaya, in other places, ang mamahal kaya yung mga Chinese jars, Chinese plates. Uh, it, it's made out of intricately. May design yan. For, uh, napakahirap gawin. Amen? Kung sa atin yung clay pot, sige lang, kahit mabasa, gagawa yun. Maraming putik sa atin. <laughs> But ceramic, bihira ang ceramic sa Pilipinas. Kaya napakamahal. Diba? So for noble purposes, And some for ignoble. Alam niyo, ignoble, dishonor. Example, yung sapatos, meron kang napaka-silap, chichilong si silaw. Uh, charol, charol na sapatos. You use it for occasions. Na for kasal. For special Sunday service. Pero meron ka rin overused na leather shoes. Then, sige, pang trabaho, pang CR, pang loob, pang parenti, gagamitin. It's for ignoble, parang hindi presentable. Ignoble, hindi presentable, hindi honorable itsura. But it is up to the user, ano ang mas mahalaga. I had a profile made by my son. Uh, yung unang profile na picture ko nilagay sa Facebook. What do you choose, your face or your shoes? I did not understand at first. Anong pipiliin kong litrato mo? Yung mukha mo, laragay ko sa Facebook profile mo, yung shoes mo. Never mind my face, my shoes. Pinicturean yung shoes ko na yung brown, na parang ginawang sandal. If you see that my old Facebook pa, nilagay doon. Ilang taon na hanggang ngayon, natanggal na yung swilas andro pa rin, ginagamit ko. Why? It is a, an, a gamit ko na not noble, it's, it's not honorable kasi nakakahiyang gamitin sa church, but it is what's comfortable to me that I always use. So it becomes honorable for me because I use it although it's not honorable for people who see it, but it is dependent on the user. So if we understand that, you know, God sees our hearts, not your itsura, not even your bank account, not your house, not your kinataor or kisig mo o ganda mo. God sees your heart. It's all up to you because it's all up to us to say, God, you are the user. You are the master. Amen? And so, if a man cleanses himself from the latter, meaning from the ignoble, kahit sabi natin na old yan, but I see that there's nothing wrong in using it, but he will be an instrument for noble purposes. Kahit sabihin natin, it's being judged by most na napakaluma naman yan, napangit yan, ang pangit ng boses, ang baho-baho niya, bakit we invite yan sa church? You know, we are not to judge the outward appearance of people. If you are in need, it does not matter kung nakupit-kupit yung jar na hihiramin mo o napakakintab man yan, stainless man yan, o ceramic, or anong plastic man yan. You know, when God looks at the lives of people, we are not to judge them. Amen. When you first came here, your life was not perfect. We live a crooked life. God wants to mend those crookedness. And that's why He's giving us a responsibility to reach out to go and borrow jars and vessels, the lives of people that God may mend and may fill with His presence. Hallelujah. Amen. So it is up to Him. He will be an instrument for noble purposes, made holy, useful to the Master. And be prepared to do any good work. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go back now. Now the next, we see that in verse 3 of that story while ago about the widow, when they started to do the instructions of Elisha to go around and borrow, it, it meant something 
needed to be done. Ha? Karamihan tayo, magtatanong pa tayo. Pastor Melchor, why would you send me to go and borrow jars? Why would you send me to go and preach in the Bible study? Ang kailangan ko yung prayer mo eh. Why would you want me to worship pa doon sa church? Ang kailangan ko yung prayer mo eh. Why do you want me to go and attend prayer meetings? Ang kailangan ko yung prayer lang ng pastor. You know, I, I stay in a place sa province in Kalinga. Kung maaari, ano eh, push button yung pastor. Pastor, pag-pray naman ni anak ko nandun sa ospital, nagkadengke. Pastor, tingnan mo nga kung may magbibigay, magdodonate ng blood dyan. Pastor, pwedeng ano, ipag-pray natin nga yung bukit para sa harvest ay eh, malaki, maganda yung harvest. Ang daming gusto, pastor, pastor lahat. Eh. Tapos kung ang pastor magtatanong, announce niya, oh, may prayer meeting tayo sa Wednesday, dumalong na tayo to have a congregation of about roughly about 380 to 420 and then there are only about five people to appear for a prayer meeting. How would you feel if you were the pastor? Can you understand? You know, when people are in need, they would do anything. You would do anything the instructions na nagbibigay sa iyo. Just like this widow, she had, they had to follow the instructions of the, of the servant of God to borrow not just a few, but lahat ang pwedeng mahiram nila. And so we saw the miracle at the end of this story. We need to be prepared for a blessing, mga kapatid. These vessels talk about souls, about people na you walk by, you pass by there sa Walmart o sa 7-Eleven o dyan sa Chatter Garden. Kung ano yung mga tao na, na masabsabat yun dita. Importante kakabsat. Importante mga kapatid na pansinin natin ano ba ang gusto ng Panginoon na hiramin natin yung oras nila. Mas lalo kung alam natin may problema rin yung tao. Then we take time. And we also need to improve our prayer life. You know, verse 4 talks about improving our prayer life. But our faith is tested. You may write down in Matthew chapter 9. Could we read that verse in Matthew chapter 9? Verse 28 to 29. You know, many times people could hardly follow instructions. Ang hirap gawin ng pinapatrabaho ng pastor or pinapa the trabaho ng leader, if we lack faith, her faith is tested. Matthew chapter 9, verse 20. When he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him. This is talking about Jesus Christ. And he asked them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Sabi ng Panginoong Jesus. Tinatanong, sinusunod ng mga blind. Do you believe that I am able to heal? I am able to do this. I am able to fill your life. Yes, Lord, they replied. Then he touched their eyes and said, According, basahin na natin lahat. According to your faith, it will be done to you. You see, Jesus said this to blind people who could not see what they were doing. Hindi nila alam kung saan tinutunguhan. Hindi nila nakikita kung anong dinadaanan nila. Jesus was talking to a group of blind men na gustong sumunod, gusto kailangan nila yung healing. And so, ang sagot ng Panginoon, do you believe? You ask your neighbor, kadalog man nila. Kadalog, kapitog. Do you believe? You ask. You ask each other, do you believe? Do you believe? Anong sasagot mo? I believe. But then Jesus says, according to your faith, sabihin mo sa katabi mo, according to your faith, will it be done to you? Will it be done to you? Tayo na hindi you tell it back. According to your faith, yes, will it be done to you? You know, mga kapatid, 
This removes all confusion sa isipan ng tao. If you are given instructions, you are given a task to do. Kung sasabihin, it's just a matter of raising your hand, raise your hands. Huwag kayong matakot na maamoy nila yun. <laughs> Bakit kasi iniisip mo yun? E, pumunta ka may problema ka, pumunta ka sa church. Raise up your hands, sabi ng pastor. Raise your hands. Let's kneel down in prayer. Let's kneel down in prayer. Let's clap our hands. Let's clap our hands. What's so difficult to do about that? It is pride. There's nothing wrong. Sinong audience natin? Hindi yung katabi mo. Hindi pa si pastor. It is God that we are wanting to please. So if there is an instruction, pagpahirapan pa yung pastor na ulit-ulitin. Yes. Do you believe? Let your faith, let it be done to you according to your faith. Amen? Amen. Yes. Ang daming natetesting even in the, in the part of pledging and giving your tithes and special and, uh, and sacrificial offerings. Why? It is our faith. Everything should be done by faith and through faith. Kaya sabi ng Panginoon Jesus, according to your faith. Kahit sinasabi ni Pastor Glenda dito, ulit-ulit niya sinasabi, you will be blessed if you come to worship God. Do I hear Amen? Amen. Oh, tignan niyo, delayed reaction mo. <laughs> Kulang sa pamati na ito. Dapat sabihin mo, you will be blessed when you come and worship God. Amen. Ayun, puno na ng faith niyo. Yes, that's true. Tinatawanan natin. But you know, our action would show our level of faith. Doon sa, sa Macau, ay, si Pastor Melcher, nakingin, tapos, han mo urahin, hindi mo naantay na matapos si exhortation, gusto mong pumunta na, kahit wala ba yung basket, andyan ka na magulog ng over. <laughs> Tingnan mo ang pupunta dadalo sa kasal o birthday. Kung maaari, nauunahan, kahit wala kang invitation at dyan ka na. <laughs> Ganun ang pangyayari. Yun ang katotohanan. But when it comes to spiritual things, when it comes for the things of God that would please God, ay nakakahuli sila. Mauna pa si Pasto bago pupunta. You know, I learned even when I was growing in faith, nobody's perfect, you know? But when you learn, kayo may may anak. Bakit mo tinatawagan anak mo? Ang gibong-gibong anak ko. Di ba? Kahit hindi mo sinabi magwalis, kinuha na yung walis at daswan, magwalis-walis na niya. Kahit two years old lang yan. Ha? They learn through what they see. They learn through what they hear. Hello, Christians. Amen. Yes. Huwag natin ipahirapan ang pastor na nag exhort Actually, hindi kailangan ang nag exhort palati dito. Parati dito. Basta pagkatapos natin, time for giving, you are prepared. You know, a farmer, do you know of a farmer that somebody gives instructions to? No. Ang farmer, ang kinitignan ng farmer yung panahon. It's almost the rain. I need to go and arado may talon, may bukit. Yes. It's only yung nakikita, napapansin. You know, it's God who gives instruction to the farmer. That's why the farmer knows the time when it's time for planting. Yes. The farmer knows the time when it's time for kailangan magkabuno. Diba? At kailangan magdilig to water, mag-irrigate. Pero ang mga tao, karamihan, yung harvest agad ang gusto. Yes. This widow, I guess, itong widow na to, we could, it represents most of us. We are so eager for the need to be met. Sino ang walang need dito? Taas ang kamay. Now, who has a need here? Raise your hand. Let's be honest. Do not fold your hands. You're not honest if you, you say you do not have a need. All of us, we have a need. Yeah. Especially the salvation of our families, right? Yeah. If you have a need, you're so eager to do something. Sabi ko nga, your very being here in Hong Kong, 
inaksyonan mo ang plano mo, plano ng pamilya para maghanap buhay. Totoo? Yes. And you cannot deny that. And so, when we know that there is a need also to support God's work, because now alam na natin na mula ang tayo sa mundi ako, we heard about God's work, na taniman na tayo ng salita ng Diyos, ilang beses, how many, how long have we been here in this church? And if you are part of a family, automatic na yan, nasa isipan, nasa puso, to extend a hand. Amen? Palapakan tayo mga yan. So it's not only yung faith, hindi lang yung faith ang natetesting sa atin. We need our, our we need to tanggayan, may dikararap. How many of you Ano yung tanggayan sa Tagalog? Samahan ng panalangin. It's just like a farmer. You know, a farmer that says just go and throw out the seeds. Yung seeds na butil, hindi lang pupunta na, sige, inahapakan, sige, kinakain ng ibon, sige. Hindi sinasayang yung butil. But a farmer diligently plants each seed or Ano yung tawag doon? Pag... Basta. Alam nyo na. Each farmer would plant diligently yung pagtatanim. Binabantayan. It takes effort. Hanga sinasalot. So even in our kind of giving or our service to the Lord, whether it is serving na through your time, through your talent, how many of you do your service prayerfully? Have they ever taught you that it's important that when you give, you give with a prayer? Amen. It's not lang yung at the end of the giving that the exhorter will pray na bless this offering that it may be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. Even you, so that the prayer of that exhorter may patupad even you as you have a need in your life need to reach out for your family, for your father who needs healing, for your husband to be more committed in his faith, for your child to come, to become nagagagat, to become knowledgeable, more wisdom, to grow in knowledge as you give your offering. Lord, reach out to my son. Amen. Every time you come to give something to the Lord, even if that is of monetary value, but your prayer is more importantly needed by God so that He will reach out to your families. Lord, I need healing for my Father. Amen. When you go and give, you're ready with your giving and your offerings, you pray, Father, mend the relationship of my brothers and sisters. Amen. Hindi lang po tayo nagbibigay na walang purpose. It's just like a farmer when he gives. I believe that it's like this widow when she was in dire need that she wanted the help of Pastor Elisha. She prayerfully obeyed nung sinabi ng Elisha na magpasok kayo, manghiram kayo ng daming vessels. We need prayer, mga kapatid. We say prayer. Prayer. Prayer and faith. Prayer and faith. Amen. That He is able to do this. And we need to be, we need to understand na yun ang desire ng Panginoon. Hindi automatic ang Panginoong Diyos. Although He could do automatic at an instant, di ba, Pastor? Sabi ni Pastor kanina, Ay, huwag natin pagalitin ang Diyos. Kasi doon nagiging instant ang Panginoon. You know? But it is for people, it's hindi instant sa atin eh, na magbago. God knows that. God understands that situation. Na hindi instant, na bigla tayong magbibigay yung pangangailangan but He is testing us. If we know how to follow instructions, then we shall see the blessing. Amen? What else do we need to we learn from here? If you read, open your Bibles, we you see Matthew chapter 6, verse 8. Sabi dito, your Father in Heaven. 6, ah, tama ba? Yes. Do not be like them. Anong tinutukoy dito? Yung mga nagda-doubt. The doubters, the unbelievers. Yung mga matigas ang ulo. Do not be like them. Yung masyadong marunong, masyadong 
Ang daming alam. Do not be like them. For your father knows. You know yung them sinasabi, those who always worry. Those who always make trouble. Ang daming question. Uh, those who are not obedient. Do not be like them. For your father knows what you need before you ask him. Amen? Amen. Alam, na, alam na ng Panginoon ang, ang mga pangangailangan natin even before we ask him. And so it's very important, mga kapatid, na what we hear, we apply it in our lives. And before we go to the last part of this, na sabi na, you go and sell your oil and pay your debts, we are reminded, mga kapatid, na to always include our leaders, to always include our pastors sa ating panalangin. Our, when we make a report, when we give information as part of accountability, we learned last Tuesday that isang principle ng stewardship is accountability. Amen? And we need to report ang mga accomplishments natin. Yun ang isang ginahanap ni Bishop sa lahat ng mga pastors. Magre-report. Uso na ang text na yun. Maybe 10, 15 years ago na walang cellphone, walang hindi tayo marunong mag-text. Hindi hinahanap ang accountability. Sabi ko nga during the seminar about, about stewardship, each one of us, marunong kami, tinapos ka wala. We are all accountable because of our work. Right? Kung anong binigay ng inyong amo na trabaho mo, you're accountable to your amo. When we come to church, we're accountable to our leaders, to our pastor. When we are by ourselves about our own spiritual lives and responsibilities, we're accountable to God. Even how we take care of our health. Okay? Sinasabi, bawal ang soft drinks. Bawal ang ice cream. Sa tabok, dalhin nyo na lang yung ice cream nyo. <laughs> Hindi bawal doon kasi si mainit doon. Pero bawal dito dahil may corona. It only more aggravates to the respiratory problem. Right? Kanina, eh, nung pumasok kami sa Macau, sa yung worship hall, alala ni Pastor Melchor yung mask nilagay niya. Ako naman nilagay ko, pero nung pumasok ako, tinanggal ko kasi may kukunin ako. Oh, sabi ng guard, you're holding your mask with your hand. Ano gawin ko? <laughs> may kamay nga ako na <laughs> Pero, sabi niya, naalala ko yung, yung instruction ng ilang araw magmula galing kami dito na accountable bawat isa na kailangan may mask. Lalabas kayo ng bahay bago ka lalabas, kailangan may mask. Now, you ride the public ferry or the bus or the boy, you need to have your mask. It's all over, pati sa Macau Ferry na talaga yun, you need to have your mask. Nakalimutan ko. Eh, parang nasaktan ako. Nung sabi, hindi ko naintindihan. So, you're holding your mask with your hand. <laughs> Bawal pala hawakan yun. <laughs> but anyway, dun, about instructions, about reasoning, about being accountable. Amen? Ang lesson dito. So lastly, sa verse 7, ayan na. Nakita na natin yung resulta ng obedience. It's very important, mga kapatid. This widow did not realize it at first na may gustong ipahayag o ipakita ng Panginoon na hindi basta-basta bayaran yung utang agad-agad. Pero may tinuturo sa nanay at sa mga anak na importante ma-establish ang prayer life ng isang family, mga kapatid. Importante ma-establish na bawat pamilya, bawat tao, we are responsible to share what we have. Amen po na yung mata. Amen! Na responsible tayo, hati yung maglaimot, lumako lang. Hindi tayo magustong mga sinasabi madamo. Di ba? Mas magandang pakinggan, oh, very open si sister, that she shares si brother, di ba? Sino may gustong tinatawag na imo? You see? And that's why I believe that even the, the, the motto of Sagada is designed on this verse. 